Now, if I had told you, if I had told you, what if I told you that there would be a team that would lose a 13 point lead and lose a game against somebody that had no business doing what they were doing in a game against them had no business doing what they were doing in a game against them because they were just new on the scene and it's damn near unprecedented like you've never heard it before like say somebody who was six days removed from being a television analyst and a high school coach being the new coach of a team on an interim basis after a shocking firing led to his hiring. If I had told you a team would lose against a quarterback that was thrown into a game after just arriving two days prior, learning one of the more, one would think, complicated offensive playbooks in the NFL. If I had told you, name me that team that needed the win to continue its comeback, you would have said the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, there's only one answer. Blindfolded, you would have <laughs> said the answer. Las Vegas Raiders. Facts. I don't know what to make of it. They have the best receiver in football, as was proven last night with a one-handed grab over Jalen Ramsey while Ramsey was fouling him. To start the game. And Devontae Adams gets just seven targets in the game, two in the second half. They have... Arguably the best running back in the game. Josh Jacobs led the NFL in rushing coming into Thursday night. They have arguably the best pass rusher in the game. And I know what I'm saying when I'm talking about pass rushers. You have to include Max Crosby in the A++ elite category of pass rushers. They also have on the opposite side of him, a guy who's got a Hall of Fame resume who came up with a Forced fumble, fumble recovery last night. They have that guy. And they've got a quarterback who's really good and can really lead his team. And they have a coach who is such an offensive genius that um, you could see what happens when he leaves the team that he was coordinating the offense for. This is exactly why, what I just said, I chose the Raiders to win the AFC West this year. And if you look at their eight losses, six of them are now the following. (laughs) A week two home loss to Arizona. Oh, with the crazy Kyler Murray stuff at the end, right? Arizona, they led by 20 points, 20 to nothing at the half. 20 nothing at halftime. They lost then in week five in Kansas City after being up 17-0 in the second quarter. Oh, well, it was Mahomes and everything like that. Sure. 17-0. You're up. Lost that one. Week nine, up 13 in Jacksonville, up 20-7 in the second quarter. And then comes last night, up 13 minutes with four minutes to go. I'll do you one better. Up by six. With a minute and a half to go. After the punter comes up with the most remarkable punt to pin the Rams on their own two-yard line without any timeouts. It was so amazing. The Raiders, who were down the field to try and down the ball, just kept letting it roll to its natural resting place on the two-yard line, and we're celebrating it by doing the gritty around the football. Because they knew Baker Mayfield had no timeouts left and had (laughs) no knowledge of the playbook prior to 48 hours before. And 98 yards to go. And they had a pass rush that was so dominant, they were being held on every single damn play. And the refs watched Max Crosby get taken down to the ground as if WWE was in the building last night or AEW to be fair and balanced, not the NFL. We're here for both. 
But the refs sure saw Jerry Tillery's brain fart of slapping the ball out of Baker Mayfield's hands while he was trying to get it, I imagine, back to the official to plant the ball as fast as possible because we saw, with all due respect, in last year's Dallas Cowboys playoff loss, that's how you have to get the ball spotted when you have no timeouts left and the time and the clock is ticking against you like Mona Lisa Vito. Okay, so you've got to get this ball down, and Jerry Tillery <laughs> slaps the ball out of his hands. What the hell are you thinking? Just like watching Deion Sanders back in the day watch football with us, watching somebody <laughs> doing something stupid. If cut him. I was, if I was Josh McDaniels, I would have cut him on the spot. Cut him. I would have told him, you must still have your belongings in this building where the Chargers let you go from a couple weeks ago. Go pick those up and go Uber your ass home. I'm sorry. Like the Ari I'm Gold sorry. GFTJ. I'm sorry for talking so plainly, but as you know, I do have a lot of skin in this game. I do have a lot of skin in this game. And then to watch Mayfield march down the field and play press man coverage. I'm not an all 22 guy. I'm not an X and O's guy. But this is the coverage you play when you look at the quarterback and say, you, you make the throw. And you look at the wide receiver and say, you beat the coverage. And it's fine and dandy to puff your chest out and play that way. But not when you have the clock and the scoreboard in your favor. And you have to be smarter than this and make sure that anything that's thrown is thrown to the middle. And you defend significantly everything on the edges. Look. The Raiders also jumped off sides on a fourth and three on a punt when the Rams are punting and basically waving a white flag. Yep. The interception at the end of the first half, Derek Carr got bumped as he threw it. It was a terrible looking throw. And you have to sit here and think, okay, you want to jam the, just get the three and get the hell out of here. Keep building your lead for crying out loud. Just hand it off to Josh oh Jacobs. My God. The dude what? is killing it. Or, unless it's third and one. How many times did they run this Mac Hollins uh, end around th- for a first down? Where was that on like third down? Or fir- I don't know, but that, Dude, that, that couldn't be stopped. It's all second guessing. It's all second guessing. That doesn't need to be second guessed because the sixth of the eighth loss was against Jeff Saturday in his first game as the interim head coach when he was just thrown into the mix. Frank Wright gets fired. The whole Colts building had to be shocked about that. And then in comes a guy who's never coached at the collegiate or professional level before. Yeah, he's Jeff Saturday. He's Mr. Indianapolis Colts. Everybody's got his jersey on up there in the stands in Indianapolis. But as the head coach, and you're going to have as the play caller, a guy who's never done it either. And you're going to start Matt Ryan after being benched out of the blue. And he's going to run for 40 damn yards and a third down against you. I mean, this is unbelievable. Just if the Raiders protected any of these leads and won any of these two games, either of them, let's just say both of them, let's say they did all of this and finished strong and didn't shoot themselves in the foot or slap footballs away or or suddenly go into a tortoise shell on offense when you need to be aggressive and then go overly aggressive like your Greg Williams hopped up on caffeine on defense when you should be more conservative at the end of the game. Five and eight. Five and eight, five and eight turns into 11 and two. Five and eight turns yeah. into 11 and two. Yo, the Raiders should be five seed at worst. Oh, what was I thinking? Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. But now again, but you were on it. It's like it's like a bad beat when you when you gamble, Ooh. Rich. You were on the right side. They pull me back in. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they got the Patriots the following week. Then the Christmas Day game that I'm the Christmas Eve game I'm calling in Pittsburgh. Who the hell knows, man? But I can't believe what I saw last night. I just don't. I can't believe it. Sorry, Raiders fans. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.